Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about perfect squares and non-consecutive integers. So let's go ahead and get started with that right now. Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about perfect squares and consecutive integers. So let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at a little vocabulary. So in order to work with perfect squares and non-consecutive integers, we first need to know what squared means. So what does squared mean? It means a number times itself. And what does square root mean? Square root means any number which when multiplied by itself equals that number. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. So here we have some examples of perfect squares. So we're going to go and square roots. And we're going to go ahead and fill them in to make sure that we understand how to do this. So 1 squared. So 1 times 1 is 1. I've got 3 squared. So 3 times 3 is 9. Then I've got the square root of 1. So what times 1 equals 1? Oh, that's 1 again. Uh, then I've got the square root of 9. This may be tricky for me. I may know, but if I don't, I can always use my Desmos calculator. So let's go ahead and pull my Desmos calculator in here. I can type in the square root of 9. And when I do that, the square root of 9, as you can see, my answer shows up on this side, says equals 3. So I know that my answer is 3. You can always go to your Desmos calculator if you're having issues. Uh, if you know the answers and can type them in, that's perfectly fine as well. 8 squared is going to be 64. 13 squared is going to be 169. The square root of, one six, of 64 is going to be 8, and the square root of 169 is going to be 13. So again, we're looking for numbers that multiply times themselves to give us the squares, and then for square roots, we're looking for that number uh, going in the opposite direction. Now let's take a look at another definition. Now when we talk about perfect squares, a perfect square is a whole number whose square root is an integer. And a perfect square cannot be negative. So a perfect square can never be negative. Now let's take a look at this in practice. So here we are at example A, and it says place each of the following square roots on the number line below. So no problem, all I gotta do is find the perfect squares and put them right on the numbers that are there. However, we have a slight issue. As we can see with letter A, it says the square root of two. And we know the square root of two is not a perfect square. So in order to figure out where it belongs in this number line, we need to use our Desmos calculator. Of course, we could try and figure out what numbers the square root of two falls between on our own, but I'm gonna use my Desmos calculator for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my Desmos calculator here. And as you can see, I've typed in the square root of two, and it says that it's 1.412 on and on and on and on and on. So the key there is I'm going to move my calculator out of the way, and then we're going to write 1.41 with three dots on the end, indicating that it goes on and on and on and does not end. Now, I'm going to use my calculator to do that to the same to all of these numbers. You could, of course, find one, put it on the number line, find another, put it on the number line, but we're going to put all of the ones in the calculator first. So I'm going to do that very quickly, as you can see here. And that shows me all the numbers through my calculator. Now we just need to put them on the number line. So we're going to start with 1.41. So again, that's going to be somewhere between 1 and 2, a little near the middle, but a little bit closer to the 1, and that's going to be point A. 8.36, so again, somewhere between 8 and 9, a little bit closer to the 8, and again, that's point B. Make sure that you are labeling your points. Square root of 36 is 6. That one's nice and easy right in the middle. That's a perfect square. 4.58 is essentially right here in the middle between 4 and 5. 4.12, a little bit closer to the one or to the four than to the five. And 7.9, again, going to be a little bit closer to the eight and somewhere in between. So when you have non-perfect squares, the key is that they're going to be between numbers that are whole numbers. Now let's take a look at example B. So here we are at example B, and it talks about consecutive integers. So first we need to know what consecutive integers are. Consecutive integers are integers that follow each other in order. So our question here says, between what two consecutive integers does this expression fall? So our expression first is the square root of 20. We can do this one of two ways. We could bring in our Desmos calculator and say, okay, the square root of 20 is 4.47, so I know 4.4 is between 4 and 5. That's absolutely one way you can do it. However, there is another way that you could do this problem. You could figure out that the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 20 
falls between those two perfect squares. So since it falls between those two perfect squares, you could have four and five. Either way works. You can determine the two perfect squares around the side, or you can use your Decimos calculator. Whichever method works for you is the method that I would stick with. So the square root of 58, so again, if you wanted to figure out what numbers is that between, so it's between the square root of 64 and 49, so 7 and 8. 106 is between 100 and 121, so between 10 and 11. And the square root of 11 is between 3 and 4, falling between the square root of 9 and the square root of 16. Those are consecutive integers. Now let's move on to the next example. Here we are at example C, and it says circle all the possible values for x in this inequality. So that inequality says 8 is less than the square root of x is less than 9. So we're looking for numbers that, when square rooted, will be between 8 and 9. And our first example is 6. So I'm going to bust out my Desmos calculator. You could, again, figure out the perfect squares that it's in between. But I've got the square root of 6 is going to be 2.44. So I'm going to write that down again with my three dots because it's not a perfect square. And I determine, is 2.44 between 6 and 8? Ah, no. So I can't circle that choice. That's not one of my right answers. So I'm going to put an X through that. Now I'm going to put all those other ones in my calculator super quickly. Hopefully you did that as well. Of course, if you wanted to find the numbers that they were between, you're welcome to do that. So now that we figured out all of our answers there, we need to determine if they fall between 8 and 9. So 2.96, not so much. 3.03, no. Is 8 between 8 and 9? No, 8 is 8. It's not between 8 or 9, so that one cannot count. 8.24 is between 8 and 9. 8.54 is between 8 and 9. Is 9 between 8 and 9? No, it's exactly 9, so that one will not work. And this number is greater than 9, so it will not work. Now let's move on to the final example. So here in our final example, we are going to see other symbols, or we're going to talk about other symbols that we will see with our square roots. So the first one is the square root of 9. And that one we've pretty much got. The square root of 9 is 3. Easy. We've, we've been doing that since the beginning. Why are we bringing this up? The next one is negative the square root of 9. Now, a lot of people are going to panic because I said no square roots can be negative, and that's true. A negative square root would look something like this if I were to have like a square root symbol and then a negative 9 in between. You can't have that. That's not a thing. But you can have negative on the outside times the square root of 9. So in order to use negative times the square root of 9, you can do, you will end up with getting negative 3. Right? You would do the square root of 9, multiply that by the negative, and end up with negative 3. The last symbol that we're going to talk about is plus or minus the square root of negative 9. And when we have that, we're going to end up with two answers. It's asking us for what, what the square root of 9 is, both positive and negative. And in this case, it would be positive 3 and negative 3, because it wants both answers. So anytime that you see that symbol that you probably have not seen before, you are going to make sure that you include two answers. You've got two symbols, you want to give me two answers. That brings us to the end of this slide and brings us to the end of this set of notes. If you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub and we will catch you in the next one. Yeah.